Um, I can't today talk about radical democracy, which is what I'm going to do, without first taking a second to bring your attention to what's happening in Spain um, today, a member of the, Euro the European Union, where very, very basic um, civic and political rights are being breached. We have our Catalan democratically elected government, half of it in prison since yesterday. And that's it. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, <laughs> thanks. Just, um, just for everyone to be aware that this is very dark times for democracy in, in Europe in general for all of us. So I'm going to talk about the, um, the CIDIM, which is a digital commons infrastructure for participatory democracy. It is a technological project and a community. It is a digital platform made um, with free software, as you know, for institutions and organizations. Um, the CIDIM is the biggest free open source project in the Barcelona City Council and it is a commons public partnership. Um, it is a reality today. Uh, it has 27,000 um, participants in Barcelona, almost 12,000 12, proposals, more than 8,000 have been accepted, um, more than 7,000 um, were done by citizens, and about 1,600, um, and the rest were done by uh, civil servants because the city council can also make proposals. Um, 1,600 results in the form of, um, took a form of an article in a law or maybe were financed, uh, uh, project financed. And more than 19,000 comments, 700 meetings, etc. But at the moment, um, it's not only being used in Barcelona, it's used by 12 different institutions and many more are considering to use it. Um, there have been different stages of the CIDIM. Oh, I made a mistake, sorry. There have been different stages of the CIDIM. The first stage was um, using the CIDIM as a platform for massively participated strategic planning. We used it for the municipal action plan. The second stage is to do a multi-process in it. So to host uh, multiple participatory processes. The third state will, stage will be to use um, assemblies, initiatives, and consultations which are already um, available. And the last stage, the fourth stage, will be for the CIDIM to be a multi-organization, a service to the city as a whole, not only to the um, um, city hall, but to other organizations in the city. So this participatory strategic planning um, was conducted with uh, almost 4,000 participants, and you can see the, um, the data here, uh, 1,700 associates, associations participated in it, over 500 meetings were, hold, were held in, through the platform face-to-face. Um, it generated more than 200,000 interactions on the platform. 10, 000, more than 10,000 proposals were produced, and 70% of them were incorporated in the final text of the municipal action plan. Each proposal was analyzed by technical and government staff um, of the city council, who, who worked for months on it. This is one of the visualizations that you can find on the platform that shows um, 18,000 conversations that were and discussions that occurred, took place on the platform. Um, these are the different lines of actions, um, the, the, the five different themes around which the, five, the different lines of actions revolved. That's uh, good living, ecological transition, plural economy, good governance, and global justice. This same structure was also repeated in the districts, in the 10 districts of the city. And you can see here um, uh, ter the territorial coverage 
of the process. Debates took place in all the districts of the city, covering the 100% of the neighborhoods of the city. Face-to-face -face debates and online debates. Mm, the CDIM started in February 2016. Uh, the, the, this municipal action plan that I just described uh, occurred in July 2016. And in February 2017, the platform was, had been rewritten, so we were using a new platform altogether. An inter-institutional agreement was signed and now, in October, last week, um, we launched the, the CDIM.org website where you can find everything you need to get to know the project and to install um, an instance of the CDIM for yourself. And we also did the annual meeting of the community in Barcelona. So I'll show you a bit the architecture of the CDIM. Um, it has three spaces of participation, assemblies, processes, and initiatives. Each of these spaces uh, can combine with all of the components and libraries, being able to create a personalized space for each institution that wants to use it, depending on the needs they have. Um, the participatory processes um, are very easy to use and easy to configure it, and it helps to structure and deploy almost any time of participatory um, democratic process. You can see how you can choose the different components that you want to use in, in each process. I want to show you a lot of things, that's why I want to go a bit quick. Um, these are the, the components. There are proposals, citizens make a proposal, and they are articulated in the CDIM, and you can, as an administrator of the system, you can limit the support, you, you can have them accepted or not, and you can have them filtered as well. You can have, um, well here you, you have them filtered. You can have meetings on the, on the, um, the website, overcoming the digital divide between the online and the offline and create new forms of omitted participation. You can, on the website, call for meetings. You can show what happens physically in the space where the meetings are taking place. You can keep all the documents, the participants, the minutes of the, um, the event. And you can have the pictures if you want as well, and the, and the results of the event that has been conducted. Another component is the debates. Um, with all the deliberation processes, um, you can organize a discussion, you can uh, have um, proposals for and uh, against, and you can nest the, the debates as well. We also have a component for participatory budget. Um, we will improve it soon to choose projects that have already gone through a participatory pro process. Citizens uh, will be able to, and are already able, to, to directly decide how to spend funds from a public budget. You can open calls for proposals, discuss and set up priorities with citizens or members of the organization, estimate the price of projects, oh, wait debate the price of projects and open them to voting and monitor the results. These results, um, with a component of results and accountability, um, you can have the whole participation history of a result and monitor the level of execu execution of, the, of that proposal of a project. And you can navigate it as well uh, through subcategories. And then you can aggregate uh, all the participation data, the number of proposals that have been done, the meetings that have been conducted, the supports that have received, the comments that have um, been created around it, etc. We have also another component, which are the polls um, and pages to widen the process. It's like a website. And then the registration uh, of the user um, guarantees anonymity, security, and privacy 
privacy and it also has a system for verification. Okay, this is the, the components and all the functionalities, just an overview. The administration is very simple. You can, anyone can use it. You don't need to be a technicist or um, have a technological profile to be able to manage it. You can change the slogan, the images, the logos. Um, you can manage the internal content. This that you can see here, it's all the processes that are um, active. Um, the menu is on the left, and you can also have some demos of the CDIM at thecidim.org. And then you can also send a newsletter to all the people that are registered in the, in the platform. So the CDIM is not only a platform, but a framework for participation. Its architecture is modular, as you've seen, and contributions from different institutions are easy to integrate. The framework is designed to scale efficiently. And upgrades are immediate and automatic. Um, you install it once and you benefit from the upgrades that everyone is doing and the improvements that everyone is doing on the website, on the platform. So, as I said, it is being used already by 12 different institutions and city councils, but not only used, it's also being developed by all these institutions and city councils. It has already been translated to 10 languages. There are about 20 developers working on it. And there is a whole ecosystem of companies, organizations, universities that contribute to it. This is possible because the CDIM is a community. It is a, a community that we call Meta, the CDIM. Um, in this community, we design and we define the software all together. We have uh, the CDIM team that coordinates the process, but then we have the SOM meetings. SOM is Meta the CDIM oper operative se uh, sessions, but in Catalan it also means we are. So we are Meta the CDIM, it's a play in words. And we also have the labs because we are based on scientific research. And we have an intermunicipal community that meets regularly as well. Um, if, you, well, this, if you are an organization or an institution and you want to use the CDIM, you need to take into account that there are three dimensions, a political dimension, an organizational dimension, and a technical dimension. Um, the, the CDIM is a democratic infrastructure with a social contract, which has terms and conditions to guarantee the democratic uh, quality of what happens in it. And then, so this is the political dimension. And then there is an organizational dimension. There is a whole human team that's necessary to manage the platform and the content of the platform, the activity that happens in each city. You can work together on the physical layer and on the digital layer. So we meet at the physical layer and we work on the digital layer, where anyone can make a proposal for improvement or suggest changes to the, um, to the platform. This, the technical I mentioned, um, we have a training space and that's um, updated to the last version so everyone can test it. And because the CDIM is an open platform, we use GitHub. We have a few repositories, training, design, main website, and the different modules to be able to use the platform any institution needs to open a, a, an account on GitHub. Because there is a flow that I want to show you here, a flow in the collaboration, uh, in the collaborative design of functionalities. So first the community decides in the upper part of the slide. If there is a new proposal, this new proposal is validated by the community and then it's planned for its development. And once it is approved by the whole community, then it goes onto GitHub, and an issue is released, and then a pull request. This um, allows to avoid um, duplicating developments and financing developing uh, among institutions. Some, there are some functionalities and modules that have been paid by five, six 
institutions um, together. And this is it. You can go to thesim.org. I have um, left uh, leaflets in the two doors, and you can talk to me. And that's Thank you. No, just like a simple question. What's the, what do you think are the, the major, if there are any major differences between the Madrid platform and the Ancomu platform? I mean, knowing that your two administrations, in spite of the recent events that you well, so well highlighted, are sister administrations. They are sisters. They are cousins. Cousins, <laughs> ah, okay, that's a good, I let it to you, okay, good. The whole story with family at the Sidim, yeah. Um, I think that the Sidim started uh, being consul, but um, they realized there was um, difficulties with the modularity that they have been talking about. So it's developed with Ruby on Rails, which allows to, um, to have this sort of um, modular development and scalability that I was talking about, in which every um, functionality that's developed is usable by anyone. There's a core um, code, and then each module is uh, added to the core, which makes it very easy to make it scalable. And the other big difference, I think, for what I've seen before in the presentation is the community. Um, I think that this, uh, Madrid um, developed the platform and now is thinking how to reach the community. And Barcelona um, developed the community and the community is developing the platform. And it's, it's being slow and difficult, but um, we are managing it. It's good. I wanted to uh, congratulate you. It's a fantastic initiative. And uh, after the, what you started with, the deeply regrettable turn of events of uh, what we have seen in, in Spain, I see this as an opportunity to go beyond the binary uh, um, result of a, of, a, of, a, of a vote election, yeah. that is either one side or the other that, 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 that wins it all to, uh, to somehow b develop a, a common approach where society can build a solution where people can, can feel they are part of it and not yeah. like one side against, against the other and, and somehow get out of this uh, negative loop that yes. we're in there's a tool to be used, the Sidim Catalonia, and I think, I mean, it would be a solution that could be proposed. Yes, we are proposing it. <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's there, it's, the community is us. Uh, we, we can, there's an there's a initiative here in France, I think, also in Helsinki, there's an initiative in France. Virgil can tell us about that. Um, Helsinki has showed interest as well. And there are, um, internationally, there is big interest in, in, in developing it. We are going very fast, but even though we are going slow, because we are going far. There was a question? Okay. Hi, thanks, Monica. Um, how do you get over the dynamic of having party politics with policies that people vote for and then they have representatives to deliver those policies and this platform being a platform for developing policies, potentially, I mean, you could look at it that way, or, or a sort of a feedback. It's kind of a feedback platform where, in theory, you know, half the people that vote it doesn't matter if they put their policies on there because the uh, people that are elected, they have an obligation to deliver policies that are already elected on. So how do you, I mean, now obviously that's a sort of dynamic challenge of who gets power, the people or the politicians, 
Uh, how, do, how do you see that playing out? I think I, I, I went very fast because I wanted to tell a lot of things and I only had 15 minutes, but um, the PAM, the um, Municipal Action Plan, is exactly that. There's a part of the policies, it's the guidelines of the policies that the City Council is going to develop in the next few years. And these policies have been already defined by the citizens through the platform. And then there is a check and balances system on the platform that you can see how these um, policies that have been decided are being developed along the, the years in time. Well, there's a part of the, um, of the, the roadmap for the city council that works like that. It already works like that. It can work like that through a platform or through meetings, presential, physical, face-to-face -face meetings. But now, uh, with this platform, you, you can have both. Also, um, we are talking about the CDIM, which is a, a software that's being used by different city councils. Each city council uses very differently, but, um, but the, 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 the way that the platform, so, each city council can use it very differently, but the way the city, the, the platform is, um, because it's developed by the citizens, defines how it's going to be used. So, and not all policies are um, decided on the platform for the time being. Hopefully, there will be a change, and there is a change in the way the policies are being made. And also, everyone has mentioned it, it's been mentioned several times today, um, the particularity, particularity of the Barcelona City Council in this, in this sense. Okay, thank you very much, Monica. We see you. We have another presentation later with Monica um, about the Shidura uh, project.